Hello. This is really cool. Uh, we are selling this at the moment. If you don't know what this is, this is a 1972 or 1973 snow job. So apparently, uh, these were sold at uh, Kawasaki motorcycle dealerships uh, to convert your, uh, I don't know, H H2 or H3 tr Kawasaki triples into, well, a seasonal snowmobile. Uh, so they, these were mostly made for the 500 to 750 uh, three-cylinder two-stroke Kawasaki motorcycles from the 70s. Um, and it, this is this is primarily made for that. You, you can fit a variety of other chain drive bikes onto this thing, but uh, it was primarily uh, just built for those air-cooled Kawasaki triples. Uh, supposedly, uh, the uh, 400s and smallers ju just don't don't have enough power to move this thing. There's a few other videos on YouTube of people riding these critters around in the snow. Uh, there's a very nice video of somebody uh, who who has a 750 triple um, and he bombs around on it in the snow. It's, it's pretty cool. It is a sight to behold. Uh, these aren't fast by any means, but uh, for those who, you know, have a motorcycle as their primary vehicle and then in the winter, well, they still have their motorcycle. This, this was the get up. Um, so up front, this would bolt between your forks. Now this is missing the, the upper brace. Uh, but down here is where your forks go and they pinch what what this would normally be an axle uh, so this this is this replaces your front axle of your front wheel so with your motorcycle you take off your front wheel you mount your forks onto this and then somewhere up here there'd be a similar mount uh, but it mounts where your fork uh, fender mounts go um, so there, there'd be some sort of plate here and you put in the two bolts uh, that go where your fender bolts would normally go and and this would ride up and down with your forks uh, this one is uh, a variation of the design most of them don't have the spring down here this one does but you can see it's an off the wide ski things you know a good 10 inches wide and it was all chrome so not only was this tube chrome but the ski itself was chrome you can see underneath, no carbide. Now this is real basic stuff. Um, and then, boom, there's your front ski that hooks up to your forks and you just steer the bike nut like you normally would. <clears throat> In the back, this is where things get crazy. So this is the fiberglass tub. And this is, for all intents and purposes, the main part of the sled. Uh, this is the sled. <laughs> um, and there, there are two tracks, one on each side. There's no differential or anything. There's just a uh, a Unidrive um, jack shaft, just like this one. Uh, we are selling this entire getup, and it comes with a variety of spare parts. Uh, but this is a spare jack shaft for it, and this is all there is to it. And it just goes straight from the chain box to the cogs that drive the tracks, and then the track system uses a setup of bogies uh, it doesn't use slide rails anything like that just simple bogies uh, real crude uh, but the bogies do have suspension they are suspended via two leaf springs and it's it's hard to see here but that's what those two center things are see there's a leaf spring there's a leaf spring and they're they're hooked up to these height adjustable um, sockets on these uh, bogey rails um, and some of these do have rails underneath them. You can see there it's a, uh, well, it's, it's almost like a, a slide, slide stick. And that just goes, goes between these tread lugs. Uh, for, for whatever reason, one of these has wheels, has the bogies mounted to it, but it doesn't have that center, that center um, tracker or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, and then we have this section, and I'm not too entirely sure where this goes. I believe it just mounts onto the frame, because the frame rails... There we go. Now you can see it. So that's the frame rail. It's about an inch 
uh, inch by inch and a half. So I bet that fits these guys perfect. Um, and I think this is just a suspension limiter. You bolt it onto the frame and then these two pads on the outside bottom out against your bogey rails or bogey chassis bars, whatever you like to call them. Uh, and it keeps, keeps these guys from uh, topping out on the fiberglass tub you know, busting it all to bits or overstretching your your track uh you know it helps prevent a world of damage but that's more or less the drive system and track um but propulsion well th th this is quite interesting this is the chain case or at least that's what i will call it it's a it's a casing it's all uh a cast aluminum, I think. I'm pretty sure it's cast aluminum. Uh, but the side is removable. Uh, supposedly within that, you can change your sprocket size. So what happens is your, your bike bolts onto this frame after you remove the swing arm. So you remove the back wheel, remove the swing arm. Now your bolts, it, your bike's frame will bolt down onto this frame. Um, so then it's, it's rigid to that. Your, your rear suspension does nothing anymore. You remove the swing arm, the back wheel, and you've removed the rear shocks. And you just lay the bike straight down onto this, bolt it all in. You wrap your chain uh, around this tensioner, and then your chain goes into this chain case here, where you can see there is a disc brake. So then you also hook up your brake cable that sadly is missing, but it's generic. Brake cable goes through here, and it goes to, uh, well, your pick, either the handbrake of your bike, which would be most logical, or your foot brake. Uh, but foot brakes on bikes are usually, well, at this, this point in time, in the 1970s, most rear brakes were only drum. Uh, and then there'd be a, a rod that actuated them. So uh, this is cable. It's most likely just for your handbrake. But your chain goes into that. That's your, that's your one disc brake. Um, and the chain rack wraps around that sprocket. It's, it's, I know it's dark in there. There we go, that's better. But now you can see the sprocket. And the sprocket is on a shaft, and that shaft goes into this housing. Now in this housing, I can't really get a good shot of it, but there is a bevel hub. See that? That's, a, that's like a, a CV, CV drive. So that's a constant velocity coupler. Hey, hey there you go. There's the remains of the cable. Um, but in that constant velocity coupler that that is obviously there so that it can pivot um, and then it goes to another cog here uh, that has chains that goes down to your uh, jack shaft down here you can see the chain is hooked up and everything so if i were to turn this it would, it would turn the whole innards uh, but the reason why it's on a bevel is so this whole thing can pivot that is right you mount your bike on this critter um, and then, um, for sure on that end, maybe on this end, uh, this whole frame rail thing is a torsion bar. So, yeah, you mount your bike uh, directly onto this, and your rear suspension becomes this, and your front suspension is just still your forks, but attached to skis instead of a wheel. Um, but your bike, when it's mounted on this, it can lean either direction, and now it's supposed to be the... The big deal about this critter is, oh, you can ride through the snow like you're riding through the canyon. <laughs> uh, you know, even on paper, that's a, that's a stretch. Uh, but you can see in the videos of people riding on these guys, you don't move this thing fast enough to need to lean. Uh, that's, that's the thing. It's like these were designed... Uh, and then they were sold, and they built a crap load of them. And then that first year, uh, someone sat down and went, yeah, these aren't quite realistic. They don't exactly do what customers want them to do. Uh, and the customer who has, you know, a Kawasaki 500 or 750 triple usually don't want to take it out in the snow. Um, so... I'm sure that's why these just didn't sell all that great. Uh, they were only a one or two year thing. Again, it was either 72 or 73. You could only buy these from Kawasaki dealerships. There's a few advertisements out there online. If you do a search for snow job, uh, 
Kawasaki or snow job, snowmobile conversion, whatever. Um, but yes, we we're hoping to sell this critter this weekend, uh, along with all these spare parts. There's not loads of spare parts, but there's a spare jack shaft, uh, spare bogey trays and wheels. Because there's there's no bogies on it at the moment. It, it was a lot easier to move without it. These guys are are awfully heavy. Um, but primarily made the video so you'd see all the parts and, and the hole, and then you can see how you assemble it. You know, there's these couple draw bars, and they only slide into these pockets. Um, they're not secured by anything. You see, they just have a couple plates welded onto them so they don't move all that much. Uh, but this purely uh, sets the, the width of your tracks, kind of. Um, it, keeps, it keeps these guys from going inboard, and your leaf spring keeps them from traveling outboard. Uh, and they are spring height adjustable. Uh, so you can set up whatever rake you want for these guys. So it's it's pretty cool. Uh, a couple of these cogs are decent. Uh, one or two of these critters are shot. You can see the the front one is is cracked pretty bad. Yep. Uh, but luckily today, 3D printing is incredible. So one could easily scan one of the good ones, 3D print them, or Maybe the smarter to convert to um, a more common track style. I don't exactly know what might be more common. Uh, one could convert them to what the Raider has, but it's shorter, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we got the almighty Eagle Raider. Uh, we'll be trying to solve this too this weekend, and it's, it's sadly just missing a little too much for us to deal with uh, right now someone is selling a new old stock uh, raider an entire fiberglass kit i think it's got everything but the trunk um but yeah new old stock it, it is brand new um but yeah we're, we're missing the seat and the engine uh, underneath the hood you can see in the back here it's kind of like that shoe from wally uh, i opened this up there's there's just uh growth <laughs> but it still has its it's uh well most of the transmission it's got jack shafts it's it's a complete rolling unit just needs engine seat and controls uh, we got the dashboard not great shape obviously though but we have most of it for those who are really good at plastic welding i know i am but i'm i'm, I'm too afraid to break that or lose any pieces we're missing a windscreen a light but fuel tank is there skis are there uh pretty sweet sweet machine but yes uh, they'll they'll probably be rehomed this weekend but i thought while i had the snow job we'd make a de quick decent half decent video on it it's not too many you see these or it's not too often you see these critters um, and it's not too often you get to see the parts and how it's all assembled. So, uh, future reference for us and future reference for the future buyer, future owner, here you are. I hope this was useful to you. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll catch you later.